Hi everybody, I hope you're well. My name's Mike Armiger and I do lots of different things across education and mental health services, which I won't bore you with now. I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to talk to you about how we can possibly support ourselves and maybe support one another with feelings of anxiousness at the moment. The first thing to say is that we aren't the only people. Sometimes we feel like it is just us and we're made to feel that way often by sometimes systems, environments, but often by our own thoughts. And so the first thing to say is that actually there are many people who are really finding it difficult right now and who are struggling. I myself have spent time in and out of health systems and education systems the last couple of months. And I, I found myself at times struggling with the amount of guidance, the ever-changing capacity and roles that we have to take, the tab that we have to pick up from other services, hygiene, worrying about family members, worrying about trust in systems, all of those different things. So the first thing to say is that it's entirely understandable that the way that we're feeling right now, and also to say that actually what we're feeling is a very understandable reactions to very abnormal circumstances. This is a unique circumstance to us all. We're all experiencing this, many of us, for the first time. I want to talk to you about a couple of practical things that we can maybe do. And the thing to understand about anxiety is that often it can be logical, but very often it can be illogical as well. So the things that often we do can make complete sense. And other times it feels like there's no reason for the way that we're feeling. Sometimes we can just feel anxious about being anxious. And that's very often what people report feeling. So I just want to share with you a couple of things that we could possibly do. And the first place I'm going to start is thinking about this from a physical sense. We think a lot about our thoughts and about the things that we can do with, with our thoughts and reframing and all of those different things, which will be very useful for many people. But the other thing to understand as well is that actually a lot of anxiety shows up in a very physiological sense. So much of our strategies need to be targeted at the body as well as they do at our minds. And we need to think about a whole body rather than this disconnect between our brain and the rest of our body. So the first thing to think about is actually some immediate strategies maybe that you can do if you're feeling overwhelmed right now. There's a wide list of things that you can do on a wonderful NHS resource called www.wellbeingandcoping.net. And I'll give you some more details of all the education support resources and helplines that you can maybe get in touch with at the end. But one of the things that we need to appreciate is that actually when anxiety feels overwhelming, we need to think about what we can do on maybe a physiological level. So if you find yourself in the position where actually you're finding yourself feeling elements of crisis, you're feeling overwhelmed physically, and it's maybe resulting in the onset of a panic attack, then some of the things that you can do are the following. Firstly, it's a really good idea to try and find a way to ground yourself physically. So whether that's in a chair, whether that's on the floor, whether that's up against a wall. Often people report feeling fluctuations in temperature when these things happen. So a wall can often not just be there for grounding, but can also be there to support that feeling of temperature fluctuation. If you're too hot or you're too cold, those things might help. The other thing to think about, of course, is breathing. We know that that's very much stating the obvious, but I would also add maybe thinking about our senses. So often what people talk about is things that you can see, things that you can hear, things that you can smell, things that you can feel. And those are very useful to try and reorientate ourselves and bring us present. Some people also use things like essential oils. So they might use actually some peppermint oil, which they can put in a small bottle and they can resource themselves with throughout the school. Um, and throughout their setting because it's quite um, strong and quite shocking to our sensory system so it can bring us quite present. So there might be some different smells or some different things that you might find comforting or that will help reorientate you. And the final thing to think about in terms of um, panic attacks is to also make sure that you know where we can that we're not experiencing those by ourselves because they can be quite stressful and very difficult. So those are some things to think about now. Some things that we can do preemptively before we get to that state. And those things might be a huge amount um, of uh, strategies and things that we can do resulting in supporting our physiological systems. So I often encourage people to think about actually how often they're hydrating. So if their mouth is dry, can they work harder on making sure that they have available hydration to them? Can we also think about possibly 
things that we might need physically to regulate ourselves, like maybe it's something that we're squeezing or something associated with grip. Maybe it's having something to fiddle with whilst we're talking, whilst we're um, working in a classroom, whilst we are supporting our students or whatever role we are working in. Maybe we can have something physically available for us to help regulate. I would also just say that what, what's also happening and, and I'm not going to be somebody that talks to you in detail about the importance of breathing. I think we all know that. But at the moment, what can happen is because we're in such a high state of alert, sometimes it feels like actually we're not taking deep breaths. And because we're constantly trying to navigate our way through the day physiologically, what can also happen is that our breath can shorten. So we need, if we can, to just try and focus on a couple of long breaths sometimes throughout the day. So those are the physical things that we can maybe think about. Some other things that we can think about, I know that many resources might have talked about when we watch the news and, and reducing our impact, um, sorry, reducing the amount of time that we're watching that, but I would also just offer another thing to think about. Many people use social media as ways to feel connected at the moment, especially if you live alone. It can be a really useful tool to help us understand and navigate the world currently. So I don't think necessarily a blanket recommendation on reducing exposure is always a good idea. Sometimes it might be about muting certain words if you're on social media. It might be worth maybe muting words like virus or COVID or things like that that can help us maybe still navigate our home screens and still be able to interact and all those things, but without the things that are maybe making us a little bit more stressed at the moment and a little bit more anxious. Some other things that we can think about are also things like cultivating hope. That's, that's very important to me. Because at the moment, it feels like things are endless and the challenges are endless and we don't know when this period of time is going to end. And in the meantime, we're having to work twice as hard and with no possible end date in sight. So it's very understandable that actually some of the feelings that we're feeling at the moment are a bit more gloomy than maybe they might be regularly and usually. So let's think about how we cultivate hope. So there are a number of things that we can maybe do. Maybe it's a reminder of hopeful times, whether that's through photographs, whether it's reminiscing with other people, whether it's thinking about those times themselves, whether it's collecting those memories over the next couple of months and thinking about all those things that you've done, maybe in a jar. I've got a memory jar downstairs. I just pop things in and I've got things over the last couple of years. And it might range from just kind things people have said to me, people I've had a conversation with randomly or you know, events, holidays, those things. So maybe it's something like that. But it can also be you know, a reminder of times when we've overcome I find myself sometimes, you know, um, looking back and, and, and thinking about people who have survived lots of different difficult circumstances and who bring messages of hope. I also talk to a number of people who um, are maybe in the wartime generation who have real experiences of hardship across the world, but can also provide us reminders of times where we've overcome either as a nation, collectively as a world, or, or maybe individual stories. But hope can also be found in kindness and in interaction in, in all of those things. Um, the best piece of advice I ever had given to me was that actually we often see the world through two lenses. That sometimes we, the one lens is the lens of empathy and being able to see and recognise and validate the difficult experiences that people have, the pain that people feel and the difficulty that they have. And it's important for us to see that. But the problem is, is that sometimes that lens seems overwhelming. And sometimes it feels like that's all we can see. So the other lens that's important to put in is the lens of hope. And hope can be found in lots of different places. It can be seeing a parent and a child interact. It can be seeing spouses hold hands. It can be in somebody being kind to somebody else for no reason whatsoever. So it's just important that we remind ourselves every now and again to make sure that both of those lenses are in. The other thing that we might want to think about going forward around anxiety is maybe thinking about some maybe peer support systems we can put in place. I know in some of the provisions that I work with, some of the things that I've been trying to carve out for people are spaces for reflection, for times where they feel heard, for times where they feel validated, and times where they feel that there are other things that they can do with other people so that they're not doing things in isolation or alone. So 
whether it's peer support and actually just having times for conversations or whether it's a more formal structure, that might be something maybe that you can take to your setting and maybe your provision and talk to them about how that could happen. If you prefer not to do that in work and you prefer to have your time for reflection, maybe it's a podcast, maybe it's just having some music in, your headphones in blocking out the rest of the world for a while. Maybe it's just two minutes to sit and have a cup of tea, whether it's inside, outside, well, whatever it is, any opportunity that we have to just stop and to just take stock, if that's okay for us at the moment. For others, it might be difficult right now to do that. And for others, it might be very hard once we get to that space, once we've carved out that time to actually experience that time by ourselves. So reflection can take place in many forms. It doesn't necessarily need to be in stopping things. It might be in writing, for example. But I find myself constantly sometimes craving that time to just reflect or to just not have anything coming in for a while so that I can just focus on getting through the next hour. I hope some of those things have been useful. And I'm not saying that this will be the exhaustive list. Remember the website I referred you to beforehand. But please know that at Education Support, there are so many things available to you. There's a free helpline for confidential and emotional support that you can call as and when you feel need to. Now, it's very important, and, and we always say this, that please don't wait until things are really difficult for you or when you're feeling that you're in crisis to ring that number. Of course, you can ring then, but it's very important that maybe we support you at an earlier stage if you're struggling. Some of the best times that I've experienced over the last couple of months have been when people have been very human about the things that they're experiencing and said, I'm finding this hard. And actually, I've been saying to them very often, yeah, me too. And yeah, I understand that. So I, I hope that whether it's through education support, whether it is through your colleagues, whether it's through friends or family members, that you have that validation and that you have that support. I wish you all the very best. Please take good care and know that there are many, many people who care.